Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to the Q3 FY23 earnings conference call of Bharat Electronics Limited, hosted by Ilara Securities Private Limited. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Harshit Kapadia from Ilara Securities. Thank you, and over to you, Mr. Kapadia. Thank you, Michelle. Good morning, everyone. On behalf of Ilara Securities, we welcome you all for the Q3 FY23 and nine-month FY23 earnings conference call of Bharat Electronics Limited. I take this opportunity to welcome the management of Bharat Electronics, represented by Shri Panu Prakash Shivastava, Chairman and Managing Director, Shri Damodar Patter, Director of Finance and CFO, and Mr. Srinivas S. Company Secretary, along with their team. We will begin the call with a brief overview by the management, followed by a Q&A session. I'll now hand over the call to Mr. Shivastava sir for his opening remarks. Over to you, sir. Uh, good morning to all of you. Uh, on behalf of Bharat Electronics, I welcome uh, all investors on this, uh, this uh, conference. Uh, brief highlights of uh, Bharat Electronics for Q3 performance is that, that our turnover has increased to rupees 11,005 crore up to Q3 22-23, as compared to rupees 8,842 crores uh, corresponding year last year with a growth, growth of 24.46%. Profit before tax increased to rupees 2203 crores as compared to rupees 1631 of corresponding Q3 figure up to Q3 last year with a growth of 35.07 percent. A PAT increased to rupees 16141 uh, crores up to Q3 as compared to rupees 1207 crore uh, up to Q3 last year with a growth of 35.97 percent. EBITDA has increased to 20.20% up to Q3 as compared to 19.69% of corresponding uh, figure last year. And EPS has increased to rupees 2.25 up to Q3 as compared to rupees 1.65 uh, corresponding figure last year. Our order book position stands at rupees 50,116 crore as on 1st January 23. So these are the brief uh, major achievements uh, up to Q3. Uh, over to you. Hello? Yes, sir. Uh, shall we open? Not... Yes, sir, you're audible. Sir, shall we open the floor for the Q&A? Uh, you can open, open the floor, yeah. Thank you very much, sir. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone phone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ankur from HDFC Live. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi, sir. Good morning. Uh, thanks for your time. Uh, I had a couple of questions. Uh, so one, uh, you know, starting with the order inflows, and, uh, you know, we've clearly seen very weak orders for the last three quarters. Uh, typically, you know, at least base orders also do come to about two, two and a half thousand crores, but clearly this year, uh, you know, even those haven't fructified. So if you could help us, A, why have orders been so weak? And B, what's your uh, guidance on orders for both 23 and 24? Yeah, uh, this is Anush Shivastava. Uh, see, normally defense order book, uh, it's lumped in Q4 because yeah. the process it uh, goes through, it is a lengthy process. Yeah. So uh, around 3,600 crore order uh, was booked up to Q3. 
uh, when we see the breakup, uh, around 12,000 crore worth order where PNC is already concluded by our customers and they are uh, under various stages of processing. And another around uh, 3,500 uh, where we have already submitted the bid and uh, these are processed. So uh, if you see that uh, sum together, uh, what guidance we were given that end of the financial year, uh, close to 20,000 crore. So yeah. we are working on that and we are confident that we will be reaching close to uh, that our guidance of around 20,000 crore. Uh, it's a uh, uh, iterative process uh, where it goes through various levels and especially if uh, the value of the order is bigger. So uh, we are working on that and that is how that uh, most of the defense procurement side goes through. Okay, so you're still retaining that 20,000 crore number can be achieved. Okay. Close, close, close to that, it should happen. We are working on that. Okay, and for 24 also, you would expect a similar number because I believe the QR time has progressed well, right? So even that can be a big yeah, one. QR time has progressed well. Trials have been completed, and uh, we expect QR time to rectify maybe next financial year. Okay, so one package there, and then the second package in FY25, right? Like I believe get broken also. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And so second would be, uh, you know, on the working capital, uh, you know, looking at your interest cost this quarter, it seems to have gone up. So if you could help me with the absolute numbers of uh, debtor inventory and payables, and also the cash balance if possible as of December. Uh, I'll just tell you the working capital position. So the inventory is 6,500 and around 6,500 crores. Okay. Receivables are around 7,500 crores. Okay. And uh, cash and bank balance is around 3,000 crores. Okay, so there's some uptick on the debtor side, right? Working right? capital, few... yeah. capital ratio is, uh, current ratio is of course around 1.5. As far as working capital is concerned, receivables are concerned, eh? hmm. there's no concern on the government side on the budget front. Eh? Hmm. So we expect the receivables to I mean, be converted to cash in the fourth quarter, most of the receivables. Of course, the fourth quarter receivables will not get converted because of the time frame. Sure. But otherwise, receivables should convert, get converted to I mean, uh, cash by this quarter. Okay. And, and just one last one before I hand it back. Uh, so, so we've seen quite a few changes in the top management over the last few quarters, you know, uh, on the KMP side. Uh, so if you could just help me, you know, uh, I'm assuming uh, the new KMPs are uh, here for some time to come. So if you could just help me the remaining tenure. Uh, so for example, both for the MD, the CFO, the director of marketing ops, uh, just some sense on, you know, uh, can we expect some stability there for the remaining tenure of the KMPs uh, in the company? Uh, see, there are two aspects in that. As far as board of director, it is appointed by government of India. Uh, yeah, yeah. In this election process, I uh, public enterprises selection board. Right. Yeah, there were a uh, few uh, shortfalls. We are supposed to have uh, six directors and one CMD. We are having, we are uh, four now, as of now. Mm-hmm. Uh, as far as other KMP, they are all within uh, board's power and there is no uh, vacancy. Uh, other uh, senior management position as far as uh, Bharat Electronics is concerned. Uh, if you see our uh, succession planning, we, we are very strong, uh, that's a top level management, where mm-hmm. all our senior officers, they have uh, worked in Bharat Electronics for more than 32, 34, 35 years. Right. So uh, whoever is uh, holding the position of director or whoever is likely to come, whether it is a short period or long period, he comes with a wide and long range of experience. And there is a, always a continuity. So even if you see that uh, there has been uh, some changes in top in last two years, there has been no impact on the performance or operations of the company. So you need not worry about uh, uh, that uh, KMP in Bill. Okay, great sir, great. Got that. Thank, thanks for the answer. Thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Dipesh Agarwal from UTI AMC. Please go ahead. Yeah. Uh, good morning, sir. So my first question is, uh, so if we see your order book in last four years, it has remained flattish at around 50,000 crores, whereas revenue base has gone up. So now going ahead, what gives us confidence of achieving a double digit growth for next year and uh, FI25? Uh, am I audible? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Uh, see, there are two aspects. Uh, since we are targeting double-digit growth, one is that growth in defense market. And another is our diversification or expansion in other areas, civilian market as well as exports. So we are working in all three aspects. Uh, we are uh, leveraging our uh, knowledge and expertise in defense field to uh, further uh, enhance and diversify in civilian field. So uh, I will mention a few important things. We have tied up uh, with the Airport Authority of India for uh, uh, development of air traffic management system and uh, airport surveillance radar and related equipment for uh, civilian applications. We have already uh, signed an MOU. And uh, uh, one system we have already installed at uh, uh, Bhuvaneswar Airport for uh, testing and evaluation. So we are on the way. Similarly, we have signed an MOU with Delhi Metro uh, for indigenizing uh, uh, that imported equipments which are used in metro business. So there are many other businesses where we are working, cyber security field we are working, whether as a business uh, module we can supply that cyber security and networking solution to various service providers. We have already worked on a perimeter security system for defense applications. Uh, like uh, Air Force so perimeter security system, all uh, IEF airports we have done, all never airport we are doing, and then ONGC we have done uh, one part for uh, their inland uh, assets, that security system. Now we got the order for their offshore assets. Now we are diversifying it to any, many other area. So uh, apart from that, we are leveraging whatever export in friendly countries we can do. Uh, recently you see that President of Egypt was there. We are working with Egyptian government, Malaysian government, uh, uh, under offset agreements, are you so that uh, Thales has, uh, we have got an order. Uh, in C295 uh, programs, we have got good order for from uh, Airbus uh, for uh, supplying that uh, missile approach warning system and related items. So these are the areas where we are expanding. So uh, we are uh, totally in line with achieving double-digit growth uh, on that. Uh, sir, can you quantify the revenue growth uh, expectation for 24 uh, and 25? Uh, see, this year we have given a guidance of 15% plus, uh, and definitely next two years, definitely it will be much better than 15% plus. Our target is uh, somewhere uh, closer to 20%. Uh, we'll see, we'll give you exact figure once we get the results of this financial year. Sure, sure. And sir, uh, can you highlight the key orders expected in fourth quarter and next year? Uh, see, uh, uh, <clears throat> this quarter anyway, uh, we have shown the key orders. But many orders we are working on uh, electronic warfare system. Uh, many uh, uh, shipyard orders are there which will come, uh, that electronic equipment which goes on ships. Uh, that will come whether it is a sonar system, communication system, fire control system, then uh, uh, electronic warfare on ground ground equipments it will come, then submarine related activity we are doing. So uh, it's uh, not proper for me to name a specific program uh, in common forum, but these are the broad area uh, where we are working. Uh, uh, sir, uh, related question, next year, uh, do you expect uh, one regiment of QRSM will come or two regiments? Because uh, one regiment would itself be a 12,000 crore, right? Yeah, so uh, uh, let us see uh, because trials are all com uh, completed and it depends upon the budget of the defense forces, uh, whether they target one or two regiments, the uh, defense allocation and all. So we'll see. Uh, our expectation is based on the budget availability of defense forces and how they progress. Okay, sir, last question from my side. Uh, so last year you got a large order from Hyperion Global uh, uh, and it was supposed to be a long-term relationship. There was supposed to be a large follow-on orders. Any status on this? I think there is, there is IOT. Uh, IOT. I think there is some issue in that. Uh, so uh, it's not progressing well. So we, are, we we can say that it is probably on hold. Okay. Sure. Thank you, sir. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Dixit from ICICI Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for taking my question first. 
I have a couple of questions. The first one is on uh, essentially if you could quantify uh, some of the order booking that we expect in rest of FY23 because last time we indicated that we will get him Shakti program uh, around 3300 crore, Atulya, medium power retire. Uh, so where we are on these also, if you can uh, mention the status of Akash Prime, uh, which is around 3,000 to 4,000 crores, that would be helpful. See, uh, Himshakti CNC is already over uh, a month back and it is under process, so it should come. Arudra Radar CNC is already over. Uh, as far as Akash Prime is uh, concerned, uh, it is a BDL order and uh, it is there with CCS. The moment CCS uh, concludes, uh, we are ready with the negotiating with BDL. So these are what whatever you are mentioning, uh, links you to FCS uh, uh, CNC is complete. EW suit for ME17 upgrade CNC is complete. So that's what I was mentioning that most of the orders, big orders where uh, uh, we were discussing, we have already crossed over the CNC stage and it's only government to process internal process and approval. Okay. Uh, the second question is essentially on the growth margin. This quarter we saw that growth margin came down a bit. Also, EBITDA margins came down. So uh, other expenses, of course, went up. So uh, what what were the key reasons for the same? And uh, what kind of, you know, uh, whether we expect gross margin to revert back to the Q1 level, let us say, in next quarter? Uh, uh, just wanted some insights on that. No, actually, if you see for the nine-month period, April to December last year and current year, the gross margins are remaining around the same level. It has not come down if you compare the April to December period. So we expect the gross margins to be around the same level in the year end. Okay, so you expect things to normalize essentially in Q4? Yeah. No, the gross margins will be around the same level. That is, no, whatever nine months ended, we have shown that 40% uh, around gross margins. It should be around the same levels by the year end. Okay, all right. All right, great. Uh, thanks, sir, and all the best. Okay. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Renu Bed from IIFL Securities. Please go ahead. Yeah, um, thank you for the opportunity, team. <clears throat> My first question is on uh, the services. Can you share input in terms of how has been the growth of services in third quarter and for the nine months? And uh, given uh, that more AMC contracts are coming now from SOS and probably even uh, possible from Army. Uh, what is the kind of growth that we're expecting for uh, this uh, line of revenue? Which one? Can you repeat? Can you repeat? It was not clearly audible. Can you just repeat it? Uh, so, just wanted to understand what is the share of service revenues in the service during the nine month period? Ten, ten percent, around ten percent. Out of eleven thousand, around thousand crores is service revenue. Okay. And uh, do we expect, as in, uh, are we expecting a slightly better growth in this revenue stream with more AMC contracts on books, or it should be broadly in this range only? Current year, it will be broadly in this range only. 90-10 ratio will be there for the current year. Okay. Sure. Um, so, secondly, if I come back to gross margins, uh, now, um, since you are you're sharing that we expect the uh, RM to sales to be broadly flattish, just like nine months for the full year, I want to understand um, when we see incremental revenues coming in from Akash, where we have almost 90% plus localization, and even on LR SAM for the execution localization towards the end of the year, and next will be much higher. So, any reason why we are not expecting uh, an improvement in this ratio um, and expecting only flattish? Are there any cost overruns in certain projects due to which margins are not expected to improve uh, in the fourth quarter of the full year? See, in the current year, there are so many different projects we are doing, whether it is Akash, LSM, and there are many other projects done by so many different units of the company. So considering mm -hmm. the, all the mixture of all this total composition, we expect the gross margins to be around 40% range only. Okay. Sure. Because it's a mix of uh, products. It's LSM, LSM and Akash are two of these. But the total turnover put together, we are expecting around 17,000 plus. These two constitute maybe around 4,000 plus. So right. overall, the gross margins should be around the same level. Got it. 
then if we look in terms of uh, today the order backlog is close to now uh, 500 50000 crores plus can you share how is the broad mix of this order flow order backlog in terms of uh, difference in civilian and within defense uh, for radar communication system can we have a broad uh, breakdown of the order backlog It's around 80%. Uh, if you see that uh, defense and around 20% uh, civil uh, civil market, and uh, uh, it's a mix of. If you see that uh, we are very uh, uh, was a broad spectrum. If you see that uh, technology and uh, equipments are concerned, we are 24 strategic units and uh, working on various uh, product ranges. So, uh, except a few, which is very clearly visible, all others are very, very wide range. So, if you want to name a few for uh, uh, bigger, then apart from LRSM and Akash missile system, uh, there is a uh, avionics package for LCA Mark II or advanced avionic warfare suit for uh, fighter aircraft, uh, some FNET programs, software-defined radios. Then fire control system for various ships, sonar systems for various ships, some uh, uh, whatever remaining is uh, integrated air command control system, anti-submarine warfare systems. So it's a very, very broad uh, variety. So uh, uh, not one pro project or program which is uh, constituting that total over 50,000. It's a very, very broad mix. Sure. Um, if we look at EVM and the VVPAD projects, uh, how is the progress on their execution and um, are we expecting an add-on order in the fourth quarter early uh, next year? Uh, add-on order, one add-on order we received yesterday, apart from what we had earlier, uh, for some uh, M2, M3 VVPADs, it's around 140 crores. And then whatever we are, we have ordered as of now, uh, we will be executing it by uh, August uh, next financial year uh, for uh, uh, EVMs, both CUBU and uh, VVPAD. Over and above, uh, see, based on the new uh, uh, voters getting added in the voter list and uh, uh, all these things, uh, ECI, they keep on uh, planning and uh, giving the order. So major order which are as of now planned for uh, 2024 elections, they have already placed the order on BL and ECIL. Remaining uh, that inflow continues every year, some quantities, so that will continue to see there are so many state polls are there, so state department governments, they need EVM. Uh, government also will need EVM future on because some of the old EVMs, they get destroyed or destructed when they outlive their life. So this is a so including, process. Yeah, so including the 150 crore order that uh, you received yesterday, yesterday total I'm value to because... interrupt. Uh, Ma'am, I'm sorry to interrupt. I would request you to please rejoin the queue. If, if you see the total EVM, sir, five... Uh, it is EVM and VPAT put together the order. 1400. 1400 crores. 1400 is existing. Another 150 what we received yesterday is 14. around 1400 crores, yeah. Sure. Thank you and all the best, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Then I... Ladies and gentlemen, in order to ensure that the management will be able to address questions from all the participants, please limit your questions to two per participant. Should you have a follow-up question, please rejoin the queue. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Tulsiyan from GM Financial. Please go ahead. Yeah, very good morning, uh, gentlemen. Uh, the first question is on the Triton electric vehicle order that we were supposed to get. Uh, there were some uh, pilot matches that we were expected to supply in the December quarter based on which there were negotiations that were supposed to happen for a larger order over there. If you could update us on uh, the status of that as well as what is the expected uh, size of the order that you are likely to get, some timelines on that would help. Uh, see, that was one indication, but uh, first systems we are still to give. So maybe in the one or two months we'll give. But it will take time, so we have not factored what uh, Trident, uh, uh, that projections was there in our revenue stream as of now. Let us see how it moves ahead, how Trident itself uh, 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 move ahead in their business and how uh, it is going to be linked with us. So as of now, uh, that is going a bit slow. 
understood and uh, second question uh, again just uh, re uh, iterating on the order inflow part uh, so we used to share some sense on the larger orders if not all uh, given the tentative size what they have you given indication that him shakti and arudra are near finalization uh, which yes. uh, would not contribute more than 5 5 and a half thousand crores given by the numbers you shared uh, but you guiding for somewhere close to almost 15000 crore kind of inflows in the th in the fourth quarter of fy23 so if you could also share which are the other large orders besides him shakti and arudra uh, to uh, this uh, Arudra, I told that uh, air defense control and reporting system, then links you to fire control system, which is around 1,600. So EW suit for MI-17 upgrade around 800 crores. And there are many, many orders when we say that uh, in the range of 200, 300 crores, I did it will go up to 3,000 crores. Yeah. So all three services. So uh, uh, they are under various stages. We reiterate what is told in the beginning. Around 10 to 12,000 crores PNCs are already finalized and contracts are uh, they are mean going to come before March most likely. And some more posts have also been submitted. So with that only we are retaining our guidance closer to 20,000. All right, I'll leave it at that. And last question from my uh, side is... Sir, sorry to interrupt, sir. I would request you to rejoin the queue, please. Yeah, yeah, sure. And there are All many right. other participants who are waiting for their turn. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. Thank you, sir. The next question is from the line of Vipul Shah from Sumangal Investment. Please go ahead. Hi, sir. Uh, my question is uh, regarding the uh, civil part of the business. Where do you see uh, five years from now? It is contributing, you said, around 20% now. And what are the margins for that business? as compared to defense? We, we feel the ratio of defense to civil in the next four or five years will continue to be in the range of 75-25, 75-25 or 80-20 like that. Defense will be always in the main sum and 20 to 25 maximum will be civil, not more than that in the coming four or five years. And as far as margins are concerned, basically we don't give segment-wise information as we are exempted from the same. So. We would like to refrain from that. For defense and civil separately, we would not like to tell those because we are exempted from the segment wise. And so lastly, you have inked, uh, many MOUs at the Defense Expo. So any progress on those M MOUs? See, these are MOUs are for long term uh, that uh, progress. So we are working on those. Uh, these are all basically development related, business development, product development, technology development, future that things. So uh, last defense expo, it's only five, four or five months left. So these are all have a long term impact. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gagan Dhareja from ASK Investment Managers. Please go ahead. Yeah, good morning. Am I audible? Sir, your audio is low. I would request you to use, uh, increase the volume a little bit, sir. Okay, is this better? Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah, sure. Yes. Yeah. Uh, sir, the first question is on uh, the future margins. You you indicated sales growth could be in the corridor of uh, 15 to 20 percent, with you know possible bias towards 20. Uh, uh, would we be in a position to maintain our current uh, margin profile going ahead as well, despite of you know any mix change in sales? Yes, we will be able to maintain these margins, whatever we are uh, stating now. Okay. Any any room for headroom uh, to to further increase them with, you know, with some sort of cost efficiencies or increased localization, or or uh, you know that you feel that is a, a a tall order. No, our guidance will remain in the same range. Eh, what we are giving now, so we will not uh, tell that we'll be increasing our margins uh, just now as it is, but uh, guidance remains in the same range as it is as of now. And sir, last one, uh, the Swati radar which was sold uh, to the Armenian Armed Forces, there is news that there was some leakage uh, on, 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 you know, specific details uh, and specifications by some Armenian army personnel uh, for, for, for that specific radar. Would that therefore, you know, make the government a little more uh, 
sort of reluctant and cagey in in uh, trying to build export base because these are strategic assets while you know export potential is there uh, these sort of events might uh, you know be difficult to digest for the armed forces in india no i am not aware what type of leakage you are referring to sir there are media articles uh, that the the radar spec- the specifications for the swati weapon locating radar which was sold to uh, the armenian armed forces uh, some uh, army person in the armed forces of armenia leaked out the specification details uh, and he he has been uh, arrested by the armenian government uh, under the revelation of state secrets act and so on but but in any case that means that some data or critical or uh, critical data pertaining to the radar's performance would have been leaked out in which case uh, you know see, this see one thing is that the specification of radar these type of radar like weapon locating radar these are all broader specification are already in public domain you go and see james defense journal and all they uh, they uh, give the broad specification of uh, all types of military equipments if some specific detail is leaked out uh, i don't think it has it will have uh, any impact on that because it's the technology behind the radar which is more important and what is that software how you have addressed that what is that here that i don't think anybody will be able to give or that information we provide to anybody that the design parameters or design details based on which this radar is manufactured it is never shared to anybody outside so even armenia they will not have a design parameters or design detail of this radar they will have only uh, operating detail and anyway broad operating detail across the world it is available for all type of radar on public domain okay thank you thank you sir and and, and on the missile programs uh, mr sam and qr sam are the big ones that are in the pipeline there is also uh, i think a very short range air defense vishwarad program which is uh, which is which is in the works plus plus uh, you know man portable atgms and so on so what is the scope for uh, uh, bharat electronics in vishwarad and mp atgm if at all any and what is the timeline for mr sam and lr sam oh, sorry mr sam and qr sam see mr sam and qr sam definitely government is working on and uh, maybe next year or next to next year that it because these are all big programs so uh, they take time uh, for induction so and uh, anyway in these programs wherever electronics portion is there uh, they is already there in that and the other two programs there is no involvement for bl uh, which program very short range air defense systems and uh, I, I, for the man portability games i i will check uh, as of now i don't have details okay thank you sir i'll get back in the queue thank you the next question is from the line of abhijit mitra from ionios alpha invest investment management please go ahead yeah thanks for taking my question um you know just to understand the uh, you know your thoughts as to uh, you know the reasons why the other equipment budget of the air force was not utilized this year i mean what are the drivers that led to this uh, you know unutilization of the budgets that were allocated to them and whether this had any bearing on on our so has, on the years so the air force has not utilized it has got a broad area bell bl is a one part of that so they have to answer that because there lot of big ticket procurement also they have so where they have used where they have not used but as far as our supplies are concerned we are on track and uh, uh, wherever payment is due they are paying so right and uh, why uh, you know barring air force there is no other you know growth areas that we see within the other equipment uh, domain speed for army or speed for navy so no, no, no. see uh, we are a very closely working with navy and we are there in all naval programs if you see any new ship or submarine or various type of this uh, they are they are getting inducted whether it is a cadet cadet training ship or whether it is a offshore patrol vessel whether it is a um, uh, new generation missile vessels Uh, our new generation corvettes whatever is coming uh, uh, almost 20 to 25% of weapon and sensor is from bl uh, so uh, see naval ships you have you have to take care that these are all 
uh, a small number. So each equipment may not uh, be a big, but if you add around 10 to 12 equipment in a ship where uh, BL equipments are there, uh, be it if you see any frigates, if you see it's a communication system, sonar system, fire control system, tar torpedo defense system, then radar system and there, all these things add together, uh, it's uh, 8 to 900 crores uh, equipment in a ship which is there and if you add to that uh, SAM system, if they go for either uh, um, LR SAM or something, so it adds further. So, uh, BL is very closely associated with the naval program and Navy also is a major chunk in our business. So, you cannot say that only Air Force. No, no, I'm, what I'm trying to understand is that there is no growth in the other equipment budget, be it for Army or be it for Navy. The only growth is coming through Air Force. So the other question which I was trying to understand is whether QSM has been allocated within the other, other equipment budget for FI-20. That, that Air Force has to tell, we are not aware. What, see, government has allocated, now Air Force has to prioritize uh, what equipment as per their strategic priority they would like to take. Okay, got it, got it. That's all from my side, thanks. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Amit Mahavar from UBS. Please go ahead. Yeah, hi, sir. Thank you. So I have two uh, specific questions. First one, CAPEX. Um, so I think last year uh, we uh, incurred around five to six billion plus on expanding uh, LRSAM and Akash facilities. So how do uh, we see that, uh, you know, maybe in this and next year, where will uh, that go? Uh, and that's my first question, sir. So the capex is expected to be around 600 crores in the current year. 600. And okay. as far as building facility in capex is concerned, uh, we are very uh, uh, aggressive. And if you see, we are building quite few uh, uh, that infrastructure or factories, new factories, to take care of our uh, growth. One of them we have, uh, we are building an advanced night vision factory at Nimaluru, which is 15 kilometers from. Uh, mostly Patnam, where we are spending close to around the 340 crores. It will be state-of-art uh, night vision equipment factory. Then uh, we are establishing a, a, a D29 uh, manufacturing facility in Bangalore. Then we are establishing electronic warfare for ground-based equipment in uh, Ibrahim Patnam in uh, Hyderabad. Then Anantapur, uh, where we, we are having that defense system integration complex, there also we have started the work. We have taken land in Nagpur to expand into arms and ammunition around uh, 200 uh, acres of land. Then super component test uh, facility we are building in Hyderabad with investment of around 100 crores. So quite a lot uh, investment we are doing which will come in, uh, come in next uh, two to three years which will be start, uh, start giving results. In fact, Nimilru factory will start working from uh, next year, June, uh, May, June. It will, be, uh, it will come in stream. So uh, what the director of finance was telling uh, that around 600 crore this year and in the same range 600 to 800 crore every year we will be spending in capex to build our infrastructure to take care of uh, growth. Very helpful sir. And second and last question is, uh, uh, you know, what is the share of uh, nomination, uh, you know, contracts in our revenues this year and how will this change in the next maybe two years? Very broadly you can mention us uh, and uh, the share of outsourcing to uh, you know, private sector that we did this year versus last year. Thank you. Nomination basis, the share remains around 75 to 80 percent. 75 to 80 percent of our revenues, what we are doing in the current year is on nomination basis. Sure. And and the share of, uh, you know, outsourcing to private sector this year in revenue vis-a-vis -vis last year. That's it. Thank you. Share of outsourcing to private sector. Yes, sir, the procurement. FI-22, it was around 31% of the domestic procurement that uh, we did uh, through uh, large private sector. How has it changed this year? Uh, it is almost around the same levels. Okay. Thank you, sir, and good luck. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star 1 on their touchstone phone. We have the next question from the line of Aditya Mongya from Kotak Securities. Please go ahead. Um, good morning, everyone, and thanks for the opportunity. 
Uh, the first question was uh, that I had was on, um, uh, I think there was a question recently, uh, just last, last speaker asked uh, on the nomination based share of your backlog, which is 75 to 80 percent. Um, wanted to get a sense of uh, how much of this uh, uh, share is coming uh, under the new pricing regime and um, just want to get some sense because I understand LSM is there, but it will be good to know how much of the 75 80 percent is coming from the new pricing regime. Uh, which is there is no new pricing regime. So no one, no one, whatever orders we get uh, will be under the pricing regime what is prevalent as of date. Last three, four years. Sure. So, no, this is whatever government has promulgated the guidelines, no one orders will be falling within that, with, with, with that uh, guideline only. But uh, it is at the same time as we have told earlier and we repeated, the cost efficiency is built in, uh, I mean, uh, lead to this margin. Understood. So one should assume that uh, um, the new pricing regime would have no impact on margins incrementally. Yeah, yeah. This, this has come now around three to four years back and this lower three, four years performance is uh, there in front of you. So you can uh, just uh, gauge this based by, uh, by that. Understood. So the second question that I had was um, on your existing backlog, which is 50,000 crores. Could you give us a sense of how much execution can happen uh, in FY24? So we have, as we started in the beginning, uh, current year we are given a guidance of 15% growth, and the next year our guidance remains again around 15 to 20% growth. So this is a broad range you can give. Maybe we can give you a more precise guideline once the results of the current year are uh, out. Okay, so am I to assume that most part of FY24 execution can happen uh, from um, the current backlog itself without um, new orders coming yes. out meaningfully? Yes, yes, yes. Current current order backlog itself will uh, I mean uh, the revenues what we are forecasting is based on the current orders backlog, and of course this two, three, or four, five major orders what we are expecting before March also. Sure. Just a last question from my side. Um, it's been interesting to see uh, the company kind of uh, announce several MOUs um, over, let's say, November, uh, um, uh, September to October to November, last three months. Could you give us a sense of how to kind of think through the business opportunity or, or how to think about financials of this company in context of these new endeavors uh, that, um, that, that the company has gone inside? Maybe if, um, top three MOUs according to you would be useful. Okay. Is that, uh, the, if you see that broader MOU uh, in different technology, uh, noteworthy is our MOU with the uh, Delhi Metro, uh, where uh, we are working to uh, indigenize that whatever systems they are imported in current, there is a opportunity for expansion of Metro. Similarly, our MOU with the Airport Authority of India, where we are working on uh, indigenizing that uh, air traffic management system and all related services and uh, radar system for this. There are uh, expansion programs. And there are many other MOUs, if you see, list, uh, including that Munition India Limited, where uh, we will be working with the arms and ammunition. Then uh, uh, Yantra India Limited, where we will be working with their product range. So you see, what I want to say that every product which is there in all our uh, parties, there is a certain element of electronics involved, certain elements of software involved, uh, certain elements of uh, AI related things are involved where we have expertise. So when we complement with others, our this expertise, then it is a better value proposition and it will give growth in business. Now how we complemented even in Delhi Metro or AI is their domain knowledge. Uh, added with our uh, uh, expertise in the software solution and our expertise in radar system and electronic system, added together it will give complement and give value. Same time, many uh, companies at broader level where we collaborate and sign MOU for business development and we also sign MOU at a uh, sub-module or technology level where there is a complementary strength. That is mostly in, uh, like IITs or IISC or some startup who has got niche technology in their domain where we can pipe that and leverage their knowledge to build it in our main products and offering. So uh, we are leveraging both ways, uh, MOU at uh, bigger companies where com we complement uh, their strength and MOU at a startup level, our academic institutions, our research labs where we leverage their uh, uh, technology or their expertise in building our solution and offering. 
Great, sir. Um, and all the very best over here. Thank you, sir. Those are my questions. Thank you. Before we take the next question, a reminder to all the participants, you may press star 1 to ask a question. We have the next question from the line of Prabir from Ratnabali. Please go ahead. Thank you for the opportunity, sir. Uh, so I have a couple of questions. Uh, first, uh, I would like to know, uh, as you said, that non-defense is rightly uh, contributing around 20%. So in your non-defense has a ra uh, several uh, fields like uh, from cyber security to semiconductors to anything. So are these margin, what is the mar gross margin for these uh, on overall so that we can understand that uh, as you said that going forward it will be 75, 25 so we can understand whether it's a margin activity or margin time. So as we were mentioning earlier, in non-defense also there are so many different segments where we are operating there. And it could be homeland security, it could be EMV pad, it is healthcare segment, it is for metro solutions. So each one has got different uh, margins. What, so what guidance we are giving is for the overall margins for the revenue uh, what we are projecting. So we stand by the guidance what we have given. So individual margins will be different and it will be varying. Eh? So we cannot tell that it will be this much in uh, metro, this much in homeland security. That we, I mean, we would not like to uh, tell on to talk on that. Okay. So my next question is related to your uh, project uh, projects called HPR, high power radar. So you are uh, developing the system. So what is the status of this HPR as well as the Uttam uh, radar? The uh, HPR radar, uh, the technical evaluation happened and uh, uh, we fielded with LRD, but I think HPR with Delta uh, now uh, uh, MOD is considering. So uh, that is not there as of now, HPR. Uttam, uh, I will come back. I have not gone through that. Sir, I could not understand about the Uttam radar. I have just not checked up, so I will not be able to answer you as of now. As far as HPR radar is concerned, uh, uh, our competitor, their radar has been, uh, as we understand, it has been selected and MOD is the same case. Okay, okay sir. Thank you. Thank you for much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Viraj from Jupiter. Financial, please go ahead. Yeah, good morning, sir. And uh, uh, my question is our uh, employee cost is actually employee benefit expense has gone up by 70 crores. Means, is it some addition or some more items and would be increasing in this fashion? No, employee benefit expenditure has gone up uh, for due to reasons like the DNS allowance increase and recruitment of some contract extra labor and actuarial valuations. So it is only normal increases only. Okay. And sir, in one of the last con calls, we had mentioned about the US order and uh, we are pretty optimistic about it. How is it going now? Some US order? Uh, Which one you are talking of? Which, which particular one you are talking of? There was one U.S. order from U.S. company which could go, to, uh, if this, the trial order was to be done, then this, uh, the size of the order could actually go it, 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 is, it, is, it is going slow. We have not factored in our projection. Okay. So, means any scope of increase there? Uh, as of now, we are working on only first system. And uh, so, uh, we are not very sure. That's why we have not factored this. Uh, value in any of our positions and guidance. Okay, sir. Okay. That's it from my side and all the best to you, sir. Thank you. A reminder to all the participants, kindly limit your questions to two per participant. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Abhinit Anand from NK Global Financial Services. Please go ahead. Yeah, thanks for the opportunity. I just want to know a slightly medium term view. You know, we are at this year will probably, uh, you know, hit 17,000 or crores on sales on a 15% uh, guidance. The next year, uh, you have indicated around 15 to 20%. So we'll meet that 20,000 crore, which is our current inflow run rate. 
and probably 24 is also similar guidance. I just want to know beyond 24, uh, in next two, three years, say 25 to 27 odd, what type of annual inflow are you currently envisaging? I know it's difficult, but you know, if you can give some subjectivity to this, it will be very helpful for us. Thank you. See, we are working on many uh, technology and many programs for different services and others. And the way uh, research projections, long-term projections are there, uh, we envisage that same 15 to 20% growth in uh, long term. See, it is our programs will be linked to the defense budget and defense budget will be, I mean, definitely on an increasing trend only as we can foresee that from last year it was 1.52 lakh crore, it has been uh, increased to 1.62 lakh crore. So consequently as the budget increases, our share will minimum share will remain and if the, with the share growth what we are programs we are doing the, whatever technology programs we are doing maybe a improvement also could be there and one of other aspects like what earlier questions was asked about service business so uh, more things are going on uh, defense our uh, share of service business also will increase in the term of uh, su supporting these equipments which are uh, installed in defense services in the in the form of supplying uh, various types of spares uh, test equipment, then uh, repair support, uh, some of the critical area where services will place AMC. So more and more systems are going that uh, and physical terms and absolute terms, um, revenue uh, uh, operations also will give us uh, growth. Because these are the equipment which we are supplying, they have to be maintained uh, for another 15 years by defense forces. So just to clarify, you indicated 15-20% growth on the inflow side on an annual basis can be seen beyond 24, right? Yes. And on the spare side, you know, while it's, uh, on the services side, while it is at 10% now, say in next 3-5 years, where can that grow? It can go around that 10 because base is, will be increasing. You have to understand that absolute terms it will grow, but base also will grow. So... Um, uh, 10 to 12 percent uh, that will remain but on a wider base bigger base thank you sir those are my questions thanks sir. thank you the next question is from the line of khadija mantri from sher khan please go ahead hello uh, yes, yes ma'am please proceed uh, yes sir i would like to know how much is the exports order book currently Exports order book is around 2,000 crores as of now. Okay, sir. And what are our expectations uh, for the next couple of years in terms of exports? So we are we are working with uh, many uh, countries, uh, but normally if you see that exports is uh, more towards uh, uh, G2G also because the guidelines of government of India. Uh, where there are strategic interest and what guidance are there and where we can put it uh, our services so uh, we are working with like uh, question was there we have supplied something to Armenia then uh, Mauritius we are working on some projects Malaysia we had discussion then Egypt the president of Egypt was there for some of the products so uh, we are working very aggressively on export front also but normally what happens is if you see Bell's products, mostly our products are of uh, defensive nature, uh, surveillance type of equipment, communication type of equipment. So uh, it takes time. It, it does not become absolute necessary for any defense person to have it immediately because these are all defensive applications. You have, you don't have, you can continue with that. So we are working with the government also, government of India also for pushing export. We have opened the offices also. Our business delegations are going with government of India delegations to make sure that our export this increases. Okay, sir. Thank you for the explanation. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, that was the last question for today. I would now like to hand the conference over to Mr. Harshit Kaparia for closing comments. Over to you, Mr. Kaparia. Thank you, Michelle. We would like to thank Sri Bhanu Tulkash, Sri Vastava, Chairman and Managing Director, Sri Damodar Bhattar, Director of Finance and CFO, and Sri Srinivas 
Company Secretary for giving us an opportunity to host this call. We would also like to thank all investors and analysts for joining for this call. Any closing remarks we want to highlight to investors, sir? No, thank you very much for uh, coming together and uh, having a broad idea. I can only say that uh, uh, BL is a technology-driven company, and we are very few company in the country where we invest heavily. Uh, on uh, research and development if you see our uh, results 7% plus of our turnover we spend on r&d we have a very uh, strong r&d base and that's how we are able to maintain our growth and profitability and all these things because of our strong r&d base close to 2700 engineers and scientists are working in r&d uh, with us so that's what that's the key strength of bharat electronics and that's how we are able to sustain and grow so thank you very much for uh, having confidence in Bharat Electronics and um, coming together for having an uh, interaction. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Olga. Thank you, sir. On behalf of Ilara Securities Private Limited, that concludes this conference call. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your line.